everyone. This is Great 7 Natural Sciences. I'm Helen and we're in for a great time today because the focus of our lesson today is types of energy. So if you'll remember, we've spent quite a bit of time looking at different sources of energy. Remember that we said energy was strange in that I can't give you a cup of energy. I can't show you a piece of energy. But we can see energy in terms of the sources of energy. And in previous lessons, we divided our sources of energy into two groups, non-renewable energy sources and renewable energy sources. Now remember that those two groups of energy sources are human-made groupings or constructs. They don't exist as, well, I'm a non-renewable non energy source and I'm different to a renewable. All energy sources are exactly what their name says. They are sources of energy and that energy is, um, it doesn't matter to the energy whether it's non-renewable or renewable. We just like to classify it that way to help us grasp and understand where our energy is coming from. So you remember that we classified all of our fossil fuels into the group non-renewable energy sources. We also classified something like uranium, which is a source of nuclear power. All of these are limited resources. And then we've got our renewable energy sources, which sometimes we can recycle, like water or hydropower. And in cases like the sun and wind, these sources are being uh, produced by the universe all the time, so they are renewable. Biofuels is a way of using our own waste in order to generate fuel. Now, we clearly made our definition and our discussion of sources of energy very clear. But there are also different types of energy. So we need to, class, to, to make clear for you that sources of energy is where that energy is coming from. The source, like the source of a river. All right, but the type of energy is how we see it working in our environment. So this is the evidence we have that energy is working or energy is allowing for work to happen. And we have two basic groups of energy. There's something called potential energy and there's something called kinetic energy energy. All right, so this is how we will see those sources of energy uh, producing the ability to do work. So now we have to work out what is the difference between potential energy and kinetic energy. If someone says to you, you have the potential to be a great leader, does that mean that right now you are a great leader? No, it doesn't. It means that you are showing leadership skills, maybe. You are showing that with a little bit of training, with a little bit of mentoring, you can become a great leader. You have the potential to be a great leader. So potential is talking about something that isn't right now, but it's got the potential to become. So let's translate our English meaning of the word potential, the ability to do work or the ability to become something or change things. Let's look at our science meaning. Having the capacity to develop into something in the future, the possibility of becoming something this translates into the possibility to do work. In other words, remember our original definition of energy. Energy means the ability to do work. So potential energy means the energy isn't working right now, 
that it has the possibility or the potential to do work sometime in the future. Or if the circumstances change, it will do work. So potential energy, I want you to think about it as a stored form of energy. It's got the potential and it's going to become, but it's not quite there. Now let's turn our attention to kinetic energy. The word kinetic comes from a Greek word and it relates to movement and motion. So movement and motion are things that are dynamic and are happening. We talk about action as being kinetic. So kinetic energy is our movement energy. So you can see that potential energy is going to be the energy stored. And the moment that energy is put to work, it's going to have some kind of movement associated with it. And then it's going to be kinetic energy. Now, I want to make it very clear to you, grade sevens, that the energy itself is the same. Humans are simply using different names to describe these two different states of energy or the, the context in which we see the energy. When we're about to move, it's potential. When we are moving, it's kinetic. All right, let's go on further. I want us to look at these different situations and I want us to recognize potential energy and kinetic energy in the system. Now, over some of our upcoming lessons, we're going to really break down potential energy and kinetic energy in a lot of detail. All I need to do today is to get you to be able to recognize and look at a system and say, ah, oh, that's when the energy is potential and that's when the energy is kinetic. So potential, about to move, stored energy, kinetic is moving energy. Let's have a look at the system. Imagine we have a ramp, all right, and we have a little box and we put it at the top of the ramp. The box is not moving, but it has the potential to slide down the ramp, all right? So at the top of the ramp, we say that it has potential energy. While it is moving, we say it has kinetic energy, right? I'm going to write those terms the other way around, which is precisely how you are going to recognize them. It's energy, but potential. And this is how you will recognize energy kinetic right up to matric. All right, so now you're very fancy. You know exactly how to abbreviate these terms. The box at the top of the ramp, when it's not moving, has potential energy. It's got the potential to maybe even fall off the ramp if we haven't balanced it properly. It's got the potential to slide down the ramp. That's kinetic energy. It's got the potential, if we had another box at the bottom of the ramp, to knock into that box and to shift that box along. In other words, it's got the potential to transfer the energy from itself, this little box, to that little box. Something we need to think about and remember. All right, have a look at this box. Here's the box sitting on the top of the table. Here, is something to show us that it falls off the table. I want you to think where is EP, potential energy, and where is EK, kinetic energy? Can you think? Shout it out for me. I want to hear it, please. Right, at the top, we've got one form of energy, and as it is falling, we've got a different kind of energy. While it is still, it has potential energy. I heard you shout it out quite correct, while it is falling and moving, it has kinetic energy. Let's look at this system here. We've got a nail that is sticking out of a piece of wood and we have a hammer. We pick up the hammer and we raise the hammer up 
And when the hammer is raised up and still, it has one form of energy. While it is moving down to whack that nail into the wood, it has another form of energy. Shout it out. What is this first kind of energy? That is the potential energy. And the energy as it is moving is kinetic energy. Are you getting the hang of this? Are you able to distinguish between energy that is potentially, it has the ability or it's stored up to do work and the energy that is actually moving and doing the work, right? So these are very simple systems. Let's move on and look at some other systems. Remember what I said, all my aim today is, is just to get you to recognize the difference between the two kinds of energy in real life situations. So let's have a look at this example. I think you are familiar with this example. And I want you to look at the ball, the soccer ball, right? And I want you to tell me what kind of energy does it have before it is kicked and what kind of energy does the soccer ball have after it has been kicked and it is moving up into the air. Right, let's work this out. Here, the ball is stationary. It is not moving. It has potential energy. And here, it is moving, so it has kinetic energy. Now, interestingly, what made it move? It didn't just decide, right, I'm going to convert my potential energy into kinetic energy. The foot coming down had kinetic energy and that energy was transferred to the ball with its potential energy and now the ball is moving with kinetic energy and once again we see here in this little system a transfer of energy happening. This is very similar to our box sliding down the ramp. At the top of the ramp, the skateboarder has, by now you shouldn't even need prompting, potential energy. As he's sliding down the ramp, he has kinetic energy. If we have his friend standing at the bottom of the ramp and he crashes into his friend, there's his skateboard up in the air, and his friend falls over, well, his friend got the transfer of the kinetic energy to the friend and the friend showed kinetic energy when he fell over. Here's an interesting setup. We've got a spring. We compress the spring, means we make it nice and short, and we have a little box. We release the spring and the box moves. The spring had potential energy and the box had that potential energy transferred to it and it got kinetic energy. If we've got a little pendulum and we swing the pendulum back, when it reaches the top of its swing, it has potential energy. As it swings forward and moves, it has kinetic energy. So, what we've done today is we've established, apart from sources of energy, we can recognize the energy in action. We can call something potential energy if it is stored in a system, and kinetic energy if it is moving. So, if we looked at fossil fuels, are they examples of potential energy? Yes, they are, because the coal has the potential to deliver heat energy, which is kinetic energy. Do batteries have potential energy? Yes, they have chemicals inside them, which have the potential to release the energy as work and action. And I want you to think of some more examples of kinetic energy, movement energy, maybe from around your everyday lives as you go through your life and as you move something or you see something move, that is kinetic energy. And in our next lesson, we're going to start breaking down 
potential and kinetic energy into far more detail. But that's it for today, grade sevens. Goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.